Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to go through a one-way analysis of variance, also known as independent measures ANOVA for one numeric variable. And I'm going to do it all pretty quickly, so be prepared to use the pause button. Alright, here we go. Here's a fictional research situation. Do students in campus housing sleep a different amount based on how many roommates they have? 24 students were randomly assigned to be in one of three conditions, to have one roommate, to be in a suite with four roommates, or to live alone. Data were gathered about the average number of hours each student slept in a 24 hours period. We need to analyze this and test at the 5% level. The factor dividing the groups is roommate situation. That is our independent variable. The participants are only divided in one way by their roommate situation, so this is a one-way ANOVA. And this roommate factor has three levels, which are one, four, and none. And the dependent variable, which is the thing we are measuring, is hours of sleep. Now to use this statistical test, we have to assume three things. First, that observations within each sample are independent. Second, that the distributions for student sleep duration in general are normal in shape. And third, whether or not there is anything significant going on here, variance is the same for all. It's the homogeneity of variance assumption. Remember that the hypotheses are about population means, and basically there's a mean difference or there's not, but the variance is assumed to be the same. So here are the data. Take a look at the differences between the three samples. I see that the first two samples have almost identical sample means, and the third sample is uh, a higher number. It could be a significant difference, maybe. Also remember that the variation within each sample estimates the same one unknown population variance. The null hypothesis in the one-way ANOVA is really simple. The population means are all the same. That does not mean that the sample means are the same. You can look at them. The sample means are not the same. If that's all we wanted to know about, we wouldn't be having this conversation. So the hypothesis is about population means, the entire groups of interest, that about which we're making a decision based on data obtained from samples. The null hypothesis in symbols looks like what you see here, and in words, simply that roommate situation has no effect on hours of sleep for students in campus housing, that there's nothing going on here. If there is, any significant mean difference in here at all, we are going to reject this null hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis is boring and simply says that there is at least one mean difference among the populations. It's not required actually that all three be different, just that all three not be the same. If one is different, it's a significant test for the ANOVA. The alternative hypothesis in symbols is written usually like you see here, and in words it would be that roommate situation has an effect on hours of sleep for students in campus housing. All right, look back at the summary statistics. We're testing whether the differences between these sample means are significant, right? In the ANOVA, we're going to make a conclusion about mean differences by analyzing variance in two different ways and seeing whether one outweighs the other. Remember to pause the video if you are completing the exercise with me to give yourself time. Testing at the 5% level, we need to look up the critical F ratio. To use the table, we need degrees of freedom between groups and degrees of freedom within groups. Between groups is the number of groups minus one, which is two in this case. Within groups is the sum from each sample, which is seven plus seven plus seven in this case, 21. Looking up the critical test statistic for an alpha of 0.05 and 2 and 21 degrees of freedom, F critical is 3.47. If you can see that, I can zoom in real quick. And variance can't be negative, so the F ratio is always positive. Now if we get an F ratio bigger than 3.47, then we have a significant mean difference. If the F ratio is not bigger than 3.47, then the differences between the sample means are explained by the same chance factors that account for the variance within each sample. Hold on, did you catch that? Let's go back, I'm serious. If the F ratio is not bigger than that critical value, then the differences between the sample means are explained by the same chance factors that account for the variance within each sample, get that. And so the F ratio would basically be sampling error over sampling error. 
Okay, the math part. Everybody's favorite. You'll need this on paper in front of you, what you're looking at right here. Pause and copy it if you have to. First we have to get the within groups variance. The within groups variance, by the way, is also known as mean square within or mean square error. And now we need to get the between groups variance, also known as mean square between. Now that we do have between groups and within groups variance, do the differences between the groups outweigh the differences within the groups? That's the magic question. And it does. The critical F ratio was 3.47, so this is a significant test. The one-way analysis of variance indicates that there are significant differences among the three roommate situations in terms of sleep. By the way, effect size for the analysis of variance is eta squared, and it's computed like you see here, and it represents the proportion of variance accounted for by the independent variable. Again, a lot of the variance is accounted for by chance, with a significant mean difference. Some of the variance between the groups can be attributed to the independent variable, in this case, the roommate situation. The effect size says how much. Remember that statistical significance is just a yes-no question. Yes, there's a significant mean difference. The effect size says how much. All right, I'm going to show you the one-way analysis of variance in SPSS, and I'll just use the same situation. The SPSS output is going to show uh, results just like we manually got. There will be a few differences because we rounded off. There's two variables involved. One is nominal, which is the factor, the independent variable, the grouping variable. Here it's roommate situation, and people are grouped by having either one, four, or no roommates. And so again, that's nominal because people are put into categories. And the other variable is the dependent variable, the hours of sleep. It's the scores we obtained in what we called our data. Now, after I define those two variables, I can enter in the data, and just remember for the factor, enter 1, 2, and 3 like you just defined. To run the test, I'm just going to go to Analyze, Compare Means, One Way ANOVA. And I have my two variables. I need to move the dependent variable over to the dependent list and move the factor over to the box that says factor and click OK. 
And that's it. Take a close look at what you see in this table. Everything should make sense to you at this point. And you should be able to match up what you got with what you see here. This video covers a lot of ground in a short period of time. Make sure to read your textbook for details and longer explanations because this mini video lecture on one-way analysis of variance is done.